everyone. My name is Helia Singh, and I'm a wealth coach. And today we are here uh, to, you know, to show you another episode of our new series of podcasts, which is called Wealth and Health. Uh, so the vision for this podcast is just to help our audience to become wealthier, healthier, happier, and wiser. And for that reason, we are interviewing uh, only doctors, medical doctors, to share with us their wisdom in health. So please note, this is no financial advice. There is no health advice. It's only our experience as two experts that we want to see how this health and wealth are connected. And today we have a very special guest, and that's a Dr. Ashwini Gana Baskaran. Thank you so much, Dr. Ashwini, for accepting my invitation. And uh, please um, give us a bit of background about your work and which area of medicine you are practicing. Thank, Thank you. you, Helia. Thank you for having me in your show today. Um, I'm a general practitioner. I like to say that I like to practice uh, in a holistic way. So I call myself a holistic GP. Um, I work at Sanctuary Wellness and Medical Center in North Kuji. This is in WA. Um, I've been a GP for a while now, and I've also incorporated a lot of other, you know, nutritional environment health. I've studied lifestyle medicine. I've also done a bit of medical acupuncture. I believe um, health is should be seen holistically. It's not one fit all, uh, but I still strongly believe the conventional medicine is very important. It's life saving. And, you know, it keeps all of us well, but we also still need to work on our lifestyle, our food, our environment, our relationships, emotional, mental health, you know, to really become a healthy person. So that's where my motivation has been. And I love talking one to one with patients. I like slow medicine. I'm not one of those in and out, uh, you know, doctor, I can't do that. So I spend my time, I like to converse with them. I feel that's when I understand them and they understand we really get a good clinical outcome. So mm -hmm. that's how I, yeah, I see myself. Wonderful, wonderful. Just um, let me right now just say that, that on behalf of myself, my family and all the people say a big thank you to you and everybody in uh, medicine and medical world for you know, saving the world for the last two years because of COVID. So you guys have done an amazing job. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you. So can I ask you some questions if you don't Sure, mind? sure. Yeah. Great. As a doctor, so what does wealth mean to you? I think wealth means health and happiness to me at this point, Helia. Two years back, before COVID, it may have meant a lot of other things. I like that. Yes. But at this point, especially when I wanted to have this talk with you, I was thinking about it myself. And I think it's actually health and happiness. Um, in saying that, I think we need money to you know, have a good life, a good home, safe car, good education. But I think beyond all that fancy, you know, in our our vision board having this $2 million house and $500,000 car and everything else that we put up there. I think two main important things is your peace of mind, your happiness, and knowing that the health of yourself, your family and your community is good. Yeah, very well said, very well said. That has changed for me, <laughs> yes. definitely. I know, at this <laughs> point of time, that I really like that. <laughs> so in your opinion, how wealth and health are related? Are both related hand in hand. If you are healthy, you are able to create the wealth you want for your happiness, you know. Um, again, if you're wealthy, you also can afford good health. You know, <laughs> you can buy better products, organic food, supplements are really expensive. You know, medical care can be quite expensive. So I think they are both hand in hand. There's no one above the other, but definitely. When you're healthy, you can create wealth, and that upon brings back good health. Okay, that's great. If I may ask you one advice that you will give to your younger self about wealth creation. Now, I what I will say is, I think start investing in property early. <laughs> I think that is one thing I wished I knew earlier. Because, of course, all the other sort of investment have come and gone and, you know, there's ups and downs. But 
you know, if you do the proper kind of property investment where you're looking at property gain and, you know, capital gain, you're looking at things like that. I think if you start early, it doesn't matter how small or how small you get started. Eventually, I think that the compound effect of that is quite beneficial. So that's something I wish, yeah. Yeah. Great. All my clients, they know that I am, when it comes to property, I'm very biased. That's my favorite way of yeah. it. Yeah. So, okay, great. So um, as a doctor, what is your health mantra? My health mantra is food is medicine. Hmm. I think the quality of food that we eat is very important. So mm-hmm. that's the first thing. I think we really need to eat well, um, respect where our food comes from, you know, sustainable sourcing of food, respecting our local farmers and supporting them. I think that's really important. Understanding that you you don't want to eat, you know, um, artificially sort of, you know, a lot of genetic modified, you don't want that. As pure and as organic as possible. Uh, My second thing would be, I think I focus a lot on sleep and emotional health. I think that's very important. You know, gone are the days where we are told to just do, 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 keep going. You know, the le- the lesser you sleep, the more successful. I don't believe in that anymore. I think sleep is really important for your mental health. I think that's really, really important. I also think focusing on your relationships and social connections mm-hmm. are very important for your health and well-being. And we are seeing more of this now with. COVID and lockdown. I mean, we have been lucky in WA, but still people have not been able to go back and see family. And, you know, that's all been slowly affecting people. So I think all these are really important. But of course, apart from that is knowing what you want, your purpose, all of that creates the whole individual. And, you know, that's important for a good health. Okay, great. Wonderful. So it's not just about what we eat, even what we put in our brain. Yeah, our brain, our body, our heart, yes. everything, our sole purpose. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, when you mentioned about the food that we eat, it just reminded me of a quote I was listening to some podcast a few years ago, and somebody said something very interesting, they said uh, that uh, that person's mantra was this, if this food was not there 100 years ago, I'm not going to eat it. So because a lot has changed within 100 years that people are going to you know, come up with this new, you know, artificial yeah. food or medicine or something. So you just have to go for the raw, authentic things. So, yes. Yeah, that otherwise, now it is off my, you know, eating uh, menu. So which is, I found it very interesting. <laughs> That's good. So now tell me, what is your wealth mantra? Again, two years ago, when I lived in <laughs> now my wealth mantra seriously is, I think, um, having enough saving because, first of all, we don't know with yeah. the current climate, especially in, a, you know, your, even your income, mm. if you need to shut down, if you run a business, you know. So I think currently is make sure you've saved enough for six months that you can, you know, go your bills, your lifestyle can go on for that six months. Mm-hmm. My other wealth mantra is, I think, also create wealth consciously. Hmm, like that. You know, um, what do you want to do with the money? What are you trying to achieve? Mm-hmm. You know, rather than put just a number there, I want to get this mark. But what are you doing with that? What is your conscious way of creating the wealth? You know, and even your investment, you know, I think whatever you're putting your money into should really resonate with you, you know. Where, where, where you're putting it, what sort of growth you're looking at. Uh, do you want to invest in um, agriculture or, you know, it really has to resonate with you and not just what the market forces say and the market forces do. So I think currently I'm like, get enough saving for everyone at least for six months because, I mean, if you have longer, better. But, you know, that we really don't know where things are going and wherever you're putting your money, Make that a conscious decision. Another thing I'm also trying to, this is also for myself. I think how we spend our money is also equally important. So be conscious of what you're buying. Do you really need to accumulate all that 
you know, design and stuff, which currently sits in the cupboard and you can't go anywhere and you can't do anything with it. Yes. So I think um, how we spend our money, I think it's more important to look into experience, memories, family time, yeah. rather than just things which I'm a hypocrite. If I say I don't do it, I still do that myself. Retail therapy is big for me, but it's, you know, it's, I think consciously I want to move into that. Spending my money wisely. Great advice. Great advice. Thanks for sharing that. Um, and as you know, of course, people are coming from different backgrounds and uh, they have a different culture of how to spend money or uh, whether to leave it or look after you know, grandparents or leaving money for next generation. So because obviously they have a broad uh, different people to listen to us. So just want to know what is your opinion on leaving wealth for next generation? Everyone is different. If you can do it, why not? Okay. Okay. So if you can do it, why not? But I think uh, you, you can see both. I think teaching children about financials and education and how they manage their money is more important than leaving something for them. But I'm saying that, you know, people who have had wealth have also wasted it. People who have been given wealth have really grown it also. So for me is if um, you can afford to, you have, you have done your financial wealth and you think you can help out the next generation, why not? But I think more than leaving something, I think educating them on, again, you know, um, conscious wealth building, uh, conscious living, and, you know, how you're consciously spending your money is more important than any uh, brick and mortar house or anything that you're leaving for them. So I think the education part is more important yes. than what you leave for them. Well done. Well done. Very well said. It's all about the legacy we leave behind, which is not just yeah. materialistic, yeah. as well as something that they can always remember. By. Remember, yeah. yeah. So that's great. Um, I, I love this podcast because every time I, any doctors that I speak to, I will find one keyword from everyone, so uh, which is really highlights the podcast. And to me, it's just every time it's stuck out the word conscious decision. Yeah whether you want to invest or buy or whatever you do, just do it consciously. I really love this. Great. I think you already talked about how health, wealth, and happiness, they are related. But obviously, there is the correlation there. So which one do you think comes first? I know it's a matter of chicken and egg. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think health first. Okay. Yeah. Health will bring wealth and happiness. Uh, because actually, if you're just happy without proper health and wealth, you can't really do much. So I think definitely focus on your health. Mm -hmm. But again, yeah, that is a compounding effect. When you're healthy, you can build wealth. And then happiness depends what that means to you. People are different. You know, someone in the monastery can be also happy without anything. So happiness is a bit more subjective. But health, definitely number one. Yes. I like that. <laughs> Wonderful. And now uh, just a bit of uh, maybe personal question, but um, if let's say the money was an issue, okay, so uh, would you still be doing what you're doing or wh what would you be doing as a job? Or I love what I do. So if you ask me if money was an issue, I will still do what I do, maybe just lesser. <laughs> okay. You know, if I'm working full time, maybe I'll, I'll cut down my working days to just enjoy life a bit more. But I love what I do. So I'm one of those that really found my passion. And right. so, you know, I, I love what I do. And currently, like I said, now I've moved myself to this sort of holistic medicine where I really get to spend time and, you know, I'm not rushed. I really enjoy my connection with my patients. So I'm in a good place now in terms of work. I mean, of course, COVID is a bit more it's different I'm not talking about the stress we're going through that but just my day to day um so definitely I'll continue what I'm doing but I also think I will venture more into a bit of the online world so I can serve more people without you know having to be the currently I can only do one-to-one -one, but if you know I can just leverage what I do I think that will give me better satisfaction also Oh, wonderful. I think that's one thing in common that I see, uh, you know, after talking to um, experts such as yourself is that they will love doing what they're doing. And I think that's the secret to happiness itself, because happiness is just the inevitable effect of things that makes us 
you know, happy or satisfying in life. And this is very good that no matter who I spoke to, who were successful, they said they love what they do. And I, I love it. I love that. <laughs> because finding passion, I think, is something that everybody owe it themselves True. to find what's their passion and then follow it. Because then it. you don't feel like working because you're just enjoying it. Enjoy what you do. True. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. And now please tell me, imagine now, okay, you reach to that retirement age, you've got the money, everything's done. Define the lifestyle you would like to have when you are retired. What would you define? This is how I've imagined my retirement. Yeah. Truthfully, I think from my younger days to now, I've not traveled as much as I wanted to. Yeah. So I think when I get, you know, when I get the time um, where I don't have to work that much anymore, I want to make sure I have enough for my monthly expenditure. I want to be, you know, financially independent, but also travel a bit more, experience things a bit more. Um, just be free to do things that, you know, usually from young, you know, you, you know, you study and then you do well academically and then you get into work life. So I think I want to experience that freedom of not doing anything and exploring new things, mm. but to have enough financial um, independence to do that at that stage. Okay, no, that's great. That's a beautiful retirement to me. So, and the good thing is, while you're traveling, you still can impart your wisdoms and experience and do yeah. what you love to do with the other people as well. So, exactly. Great. Oh, amazing. Hopefully, one day we maybe can travel again. So, that will happen. So it's great. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I know your time is so valuable and you're so busy. Again, thanks for everything you guys do for, you know, medical world and, you know, just trying to bring the, um, you know, mental health as well as the physical health to the world. I really, really appreciate it. Any last uh, wisdom or advice for our audience before you go? I think, no, I think, like I said, um, focus on your health. I think it's more important now than ever. The food that we eat, the quality of relationship, the kind of information we are feeding our brain. I mean, try to, please don't listen to fake news. Always look for authentic, correct news. And always keep in mind, it's not just your health. It's also the health of the community. So, you know, whenever there is, a mandate or something in place, mask mandate, just understand that it's also for the well-being of everyone. So, and together it's a tough time. It's a tough time for all of us, but together we will be able to overcome this. And yeah, end of this, I think we all, hopefully we all are in a good state of health and then we should be able to build our wealth again and, you know, get back to where life was yeah. prior to 2019. <laughs> yeah. Uh, amen to that for sure <laughs> really appreciate it for your time thanks so much and um, obviously we will put your details in our podcast uh, how our audience can reach you and get a consultation or yeah and hear from you and if you've got any programs please send it to me so we will put it in our podcast as well so for our audience again thank you so Helia much. my pleasure love talking to you today thank you yeah, have a great <laughs> thank day you. see you bye